Hello, everyone. Uh, we are back with our first panel for the day two of next corporate innovation and venturing summit. Uh, we have an interesting panel lined up talking about the data led innovation future of works, which will be moderated by Puneet Sharma. Uh, Puneet, I would like you to introduce our panelists and take it out from there. Thank you, uh, Kanish. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm back here again. Uh, so today's uh, topic, uh, data led innovation, and uh, I have uh, our speakers with me, uh, Mr. Sachin Sait. Uh, Sachin is a partner financial services advisory at uh, ENY uh, and Vartika Manchvi. Vartika is a uh, founder and curator of uh, Stackcraft. So uh, over to you, Sachin. Why don't you introduce uh, yourself? You're on mute, Sachin. Yeah, hi, everyone. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, as Puneet mentioned, uh, my name is Sachin Seth. I'm based in Mumbai. Uh, been with EY for about five years now. I lead the digital and fintech practice for EY and prior to that have spent about uh, close to 12 years with IBM consulting as well, focusing on India, Middle East and Southeast Asia market. So look forward to have this engaging conversation. Thank you, Puneet. Thank you, Sachin. So Vatika, uh, about you. Thank you. Thank you, Puneet. Thank you for having me here. So I am Vartika. Uh, I've had to exit Stackraft, my last company, which I exited early this year, to a venture studio in LA. I'm based in Toronto, Canada, and now I have started working on my thesis on data-led future work, collective intelligence, started doing small angel investments. So very excited to be here and share my perspective with all you all. Looking forward. Thank you. Excited to have you both here. Uh, so I'll uh, directly uh, dive on to the questions. So uh, Vartika, we start with you. Uh, so now what's, um, I mean, uh, too many tools, too many technologies, a uh, uh, lot of promises uh, being made. And so uh, uh, how prepared you think, how prepared are people and uh, organization to actually adopt these technologies and like uh, move with them? Yeah, so... Exactly. Too many tools and a lot of transition happening. People are trying to get comfortable with, uh, you know, different things. So in my opinion, I think I'm seeing a lot of things happening at in silos and technology adapt adoption happening in decentralized smaller teams as compared to the entire organization and a big company working together and adopting an entire tool. Say, for instance, if a company starts using Slack, a small team starts adopting Slack very, very quickly, but there's part of the workforce that still takes time and they're still on an email-based system and that transition is difficult. So a lot of things are happening in the independent level uh, in the SaaS adoption by technology. What I'm also seeing is the rise of an anonymous buyer inside an organization where these Gen Z millennials, they come across a new tool that hey using this tool our productivity and efficiency will go up let's start using that and they set up that tool for their own small teams uh, but the larger organization it's trouble for them to adopt so I think the point here is the more the nimble and agile an organization is which they should be to be on the path of innovation uh, the the adoption of tech is easy however the more uh, established bigger the company is bigger the team is the problem is higher there uh, Sachin what are what are your thoughts so uh, I mean multiple technologies uh, AI blockchain multiple promises large enterprises so uh, how are people looking at it yeah I think it's an interesting time so and uh, people are overwhelmed with what they are uh, sort of being bombarded with and sometimes the bombs are coming with good intentions. So there are good, good ways to utilize them and they are channelize their energy, but sometimes they are more disruptive in nature. And uh, so I would just uh, sort of, if I put it a sort of a concise statement around it, that, uh, you know, one needs to be very careful that what technologies one adopts, because first, before you choose to adopt any technology, one needs to also have an exit path from that technology. And I'm, what I'm saying is with a pinch of salt and a very, contrarian view uh, because people are talking about adoption of digital to the fullest. I'm looking at uh, and what are my philosophy is that whatever you adopt uh, will not last forever, right? Uh, softwares are also becoming like a disposable softwares, right? So something to use for the stage you are in as you grow, as you become bigger organization, as you have a different set of people, different culture, you might need to and with the time also you might need to change. So always have an exit path very clear from any software, how you are going to migrate to the new platform, data, uh, you know, chain management, etc. And second thing is that 
lot of organizations I work with have created a huge amount of technology debt, which we call, you know, a lot of softwares they have in their warehouse. Uh, many times they just create more work and 70% of the company's, you know, budget of technology and digital is going into maintaining those junk uh, softwares, which many of them are not fully utilized. So I know it was a longer statement to tell you, but this is what I just wanted to tell the audience that be careful what you choose and always be clear about how you're going to dispose it off and move to the new one. And don't create a junk in your warehouse. Get rid of that. It's too difficult to maintain and too expensive to maintain. That's a great point, Sachin. I would just add, I think there's a lot of security and privacy concerns that's also popping up. And, you know, by using a lot of technology, you add more technology to solve some of the problems that that ends up creating. Absolutely. Yeah, so, but um, uh, but on a journey to like, uh, I mean, the future, we, everyone is on that the digital transformation uh, uh, journey right now. So we'll have to go digital and we'll have to adopt. But uh, so the biggest obstacle here is uh, culture. What are your thoughts on that? So Bob, how, how are people taking it and how do we move forward? Yeah. So quick point on this that, uh, see, uh, uh, you know, organizations are becoming more nimble, agile. People are becoming more empowered. And I think the 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 role of chief digital officer, chief data officer, chief technology officer is more of a custodian of the, or a strategist for the organization, right? But not really the executor of everything in the organization. It's too difficult to execute centrally everything. So I think what's happening today, if you hire anybody, even in your sales team, or even your HR team, or in your operations team, people do come with certain appreciation of technology and digital from their even college nowadays, right? Even the all millennials who have entered into the or Zen Z who has entered into basically the, uh, the working uh, population. So I think uh, it's a hybrid model. So certain things you need to keep at enterprise level to maintain certain compliance, regulatory or other aspects of it, or maybe the standardization of the platforms. But a lot more things needs to be federated and decentralized. And uh, that's where the use of uh, uh, adoption, which you talked about, uh, comes a lot more because uh, uh, gone are the days when you build a, you know, deploy ERP and put a gun on everybody's head to use it. Everybody wants to have freedom to make use of what they think is right solution for their business uh, or their function. And I think uh, they are far more mature and far more uh, knowledgeable about uh, to be able to do it, uh, do that compared to the past. So, so absolutely, I think it's, it's, it's more like a hybrid model, which is looking like to be the, the game uh, uh, at this moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, adding to that, I would like to say that, you know, part of the culture is, uh, of course, shifting mindsets and changing of being open to the change and adapting to the new environment of thinking and as in an organization with the hybrid remote culture and these virtual worlds communication is getting difficult and difficult people are not having enough transparency on what they need to work on so there is a massive shift happening from the information age to the knowledge economy and having enough data to be able to support your decisions and uh, take data-driven decisions and whatnot. So that's where the reliance on these new tools come in, where even uh, workers and people are open to adopt these new tools so that they don't go out uh, and become irrelevant. And, you know, they have enough information for the lack of better communication. Like, you know, it's hard to sort of um, draw inputs from an open-ended conversation. However, when you have a clean slate of data, it's easy to make decisions. It's easy to execute. It's really easy to know what the work is and define your unit of work as well. So I think I'm seeing a lot of changes at that level. And organizations are, are adopting fast phase uh, past fast paced project management tools uh, async sync tools and different kind of things to solve the communication hurdle and that's also part of the you know change in culture and change in mindset uh, equation so uh so, I mean um, I'll, I'll uh, go back to I, I remember when I uh, I started uh, working and uh, Back then, when these all the banks were transforming and computers were coming, as in it was all happening, uh, centralized uh, banking uh, was happening all across. Uh, so, state bank employees, I remember, they, they went on strike against computers. So, I mean, they didn't want it that uh, core banking or this kind of banking should happen, and they they feared that jobs would be gone because computers are coming. A similar kind of discussion came into picture with the, the new AI wave. 
uh, when AI is coming, uh, but similar similar topics uh, started. So how do we augment uh, like uh, human talent and technology and like uh, go go forward? So you know, back in the day, Mark Anderson said software is eating the world, and now uh, it said AI is eating the world, right? So we all come up with these big bold statements. <laughs> so um, well, in my opinion, what AI really is doing is it's it's not trying to replace the human workforce; it's trying to make the human workforce more effective and do the right things rather than doing repeated things that computers can do, like. it's been some 5 6 years i've not worked in a corporate job i was busy building companies but back in the day i remember you know in a job environment there are a lot of things that you have to do in a job which you don't like and there are things that you do which you like so for things that you don't like you depend on technology you depend on say building your team to automate and you know do all of those things and that's where ai is playing a role uh, by building in tools and having proper structures to solve say for example procurement solve uh, uh, filtering how an organ or solve uh, financial decisions and what not so there are tools and that's helping humans make better decisions so a very very simple example you know say if a doctor is able to treat a patient one patient for one hour by looking at their entire case study and the history of everything the same doctor with having data and information at his uh, disposal and quick hand can look at four patients at the same time and just give prescriptions so 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 that's where accuracy in predictions so i see ai as a prediction technology and highly accurate with uh, human intelligence and it cannot work in just a silo of uh, automating everything end to end um, humans will still be smarter than computers yeah so um, sachin uh, your comments on how how are we augmenting like what pieces you see humans uh, being more powered uh, with this new technology human talent plus tech yeah so uh, taking this conversation a great point made by vartika see uh, ai is uh, i mean to be very frank the negatives of ai are over hyped in my opinion because uh, technology itself when it started off a couple of decades back it was there to automate and ai is just taking it to the next level right you were writing rules and doing it now you are making systems you know get that experiential learning also and predicting that what is Uh, going to come and answer that not on just based on the rule but based on the experience also right now uh, so definitely the role of ai uh, as a assistance to make the humans more productive more efficient it's going to be there and i think it's phenomenally uh, doing being done successfully in most of the areas i would say there are tasks which humanly impossible to do and ai is really playing a great role in that and we are all getting benefited uh, because of that as a consumer as well Uh, while having said that on the negative side if you ask me really of ai is not about replacing humans negative side is ai is going to we are all going to see very soon about ethics about the trust issues about how ai is to be used by the players or ai itself becomes uh, self governing or how basically ai is going to create those uh, models which are not uh, against the people who have created it right so i think as long as it remains subservient to the people who are creating it for the right purpose it's all fine but if it gets into the hands of the people who may want to misuse it or the the systems itself uh, you know which we all say that there are science fictions that you know systems itself will uh, uh, i mean a robot robot oh, producing, robot producing a car in the car factory and robot has a problem then another robot goes and fixes it right so that kind of ai i think i'm a bit scared of uh, <laughs> but uh, but other than that i must say that you know ai is here to stay and i think uh, all things being talked about ai are really not worth spending time with because it's doing a phenomenal good work for the people and uh, whether it's a fraud whether it's a customer experience whether it's a, a customer service i think all these places ai is doing phenomenally well and they are not even if they are replacing humans humans have better job to do why humans should be doing the same repeated mundane job every day 
right so i have a very good example from the telecom sector here you know back in the day we automated these customer calls and conversations uh, that if uh, and there was an idr system IDR, that if yeah. you just call, yeah yeah if you just call in and there's a computerized script blah 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 and a whole bunch of customer agents sitting and there was a um uh, kind of that whole industry took a hit given this automation and everything and now what ai in the tech is doing so there's a something that i'm advising that's building voice stack which is saying that all these information that you're collecting over chats there's a huge amount of data created and you're not able to close the loop and make your customer what they're looking for and close the conversation because say this is voice data this is data on chats or information so use all of that data to take important decision now the human comes back in the loop which is again that customer care agent saying that oh this customer said all of these things this is how his problem is solved now all of these things are happening in healthcare in manufacturing across sectors um and this is ai that's doing the work right so it keeps going back and coming back and that's how literally change happens yeah so this in fact this is the point i wanted to come uh, to that now there are so many sources and like uh, every every touch point there's uh, data being collected so such in any of the use cases or industry you're seeing like more and more data is helping the specific business uh, improve uh, things in their business yeah i mean if i take some use cases which are very prevalent if you see the whole customer experience and the assistance in the sales productivity i think that's mm-hmm. been a huge area i mean there is a everybody as a customer would like to have a superior experience and all of us keep complaining that you know we deal with the same organizations and those organizations don't know us enough right and uh, use of technology with data uh, you know is becoming quite relevant and even the conversations we have with the relationship manager of a bank or a uh, insurance advisor or for that matter any any player uh, there's a lot of data uh, support is being provided to them to nudge customer at the right time and not just bombard them with the yes. unnecessary information and the same thing is also happening as i try always to cover from the business versus the risk and fraud uh, uh, if you look at the fraud and the risk and other side also of the business uh, which is which is quite scary uh, in the current world uh, also basically the use of data is becoming very very relevant because everybody is starved of capital everybody wants loans everybody wants you know different products different services but then there are couple of percentage of people who are there to make the uh you know break the system and make the uh, uh, wrong use of it so i think uh, data is playing a significant role there as well right so that's why i said federated or hybrid model uh, which has every empowerment at every function level to make the best use of it uh, is very much the right model at this moment that's that's what is uh, basically uh, doing pretty well yeah and these are the use cases i thought i'll share if any questions are there in the audience happy to answer that on this topic subsequently as well yeah. I'll, I'll just check uh, on the questions. I just see the comments. Our audience seem to be enjoying the conversation. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll come on to the uh, uh, last point uh, that I, I wanted to uh, know from you guys. How you see? So now moving uh, towards automation. So b- b- how will b- how will automation at scale happen? And uh, how how will the organization be progressing there? Yeah, but again, you want to go first, or I'm, you know, go for it, Sachin. Go for it. Okay, okay. I'll take your lead. Thank you, thank you. So, Puneet, again, uh, uh, see, automation. I think we did start. If you ask me, five, six years back, journey that automation was being looked at as area wherein there are, you know, a lot of human uh, centric processes were there, and there was basically a lot more people could bring efficiencies, etc. And it started as a cost arbitrage. okay wherein people thought that you know they are paying human x amount of money and can we put some bots can we have some automated processes some scripts running etc etc and we could actually uh, uh, make it faster at the same time cheaper right i think that journey lasted for a couple of years but i think that has commoditized okay today if you ask me automation is prevalent prevalent across the value chain of any organization and if you are today setting up an organization the first thing you think about is how much uh, you want to have automation everywhere right starting from your customer onboarding to 
your uh, various kind of validations to payments to reconciliations to everything even your you know anything which is beyond even customer service right so i would say automation is become uh, is no longer a new word in the industry and it has become very much integral part of it while i do agree that some of the processes are difficult to automate because it has been very human centric and it does take time uh, but i'm i'm sure there are technologies which are coming ocr is becoming better uh, intelligent automation is coming wherein ai is getting embedded into automation a lot more and li like what we got talked about you know voice biometrics are becoming a lot more so basically the automation in itself uh, has certain broken legs and if that technology is able to fulfill those gaps by using different like biometrics or voice biometrics or ocrs or other tools i think automation is going to be the next game changer in the organizations because uh, you you can actually run the large scale operations with one tenth of the manpower and maybe one 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 you know half of the cost right and that's going to be a new disruptor uh, as everybody seeing yeah yeah i mean uh, that's a great point sachin i would uh, add to it that the technology is there everything what you want to be automated it can be automated what's important for a business is to really find the tangible business case on where to apply automation and that goes down to three things does automating x help us save time save money and third make more money right that's what businesses kind of strive for at a very very high level across processes across people and whatsoever so uh, adopting automation and just uh, you know going after a fancy technology is one thing the second thing is uh, how can that piece of tech help you as an organization or your clients uh, to be more progressive in terms of tangible benefits that you can do things faster than before you can save time more than before and it helps you make more money so i mean that's how i literally look at this use case when applied to organizations thank you uh, thank you atika thank you sachin so uh, Uh, the points that i wanted to cover uh, i'm done with them uh, we'll ask uh, the audience if uh, anyone has any questions uh, in the audience you can put up in q and a or uh, even in the chat section i don't uh, uh, see any questions chat is visible to you uh, people as well right mm -hmm. yes yes absolutely absolutely awesome so either what we are discussing is known to everyone <laughs> yeah, exactly i was about to say that we have made it more complicated for them i yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. either way <laughs> yeah. i was about to say exactly the same thing sachin <laughs> but uh, happy to see that people participating and you know they 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 liking the conversation i think that's that's pretty good use of the time and the platform provided uh, uh, by the next year all right uh great having you guys here and one question here let's oh, yeah. take the question uh, it's from yuvraj mani says uh, views on security of data i can take that i mean uh, so security of data at a very high level it's very very important and there's a lot happening at the cloud say for example companies are deploying all their cloud data on an amazon server now that entire data is sitting on aws or whatsoever now where's the security what if the data pipelines break now there's new tech coming that's adding uh, reliability and observability on data pipelines at the organization's level encryption of data and that's where you know talk technologies like blockchain and all of that is emerging to decentralized encrypt data pipelines for more security and privacy security and privacy is going to be a big big piece as we evolve because just with the kind of data infrastructure and information architecture that we all are sitting on there's a lot of security gaps so, and and there's a lot of work happening in these lines already so it's a very important uh, sector so to say that's the view on security i wish you had asked a more specific question i'm fascinated by the subject 
Yeah, and just to add here what Vatika said, uh, I mean, on lighter note, there are only two types of organizations. One where the data breach has already happened and second is where it's going to happen in the future, right? So there is, uh, it's a very common thing. And I mean, in olden days, we used to have the quiet robbers, everything. I think today, everybody is a white collar criminal and it's very easy for them to become white collar criminal and they are everywhere. They are in the places where you le- you expect them to be there. Uh, you expect least to, for them to be there, right? So I think uh, security posture of any organization, it's like a constant... Uh, uh, vigil. I mean, there is no way you can let your guards down for even a you know fraction of a second because uh, uh, there are enough people in the world who are trying to make the business out of this, and uh, this is something which is which is going to be, uh, I mean, the biggest uh, you know challenge uh, for everyone as we become more and more digital. Uh, but there is no way out for that. So so it's it's like if you create the wealth, you got to have security guards to protect it. Same way, if you create the digital wealth, if you create the data wealth, you need to have the you know right kind of security uh, mechanisms in place to basically to be able to guard it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, Kanesh, uh, uh, we're done from our side. Uh, thank you, Atika, and thank you, Sachin. Uh, very nice uh, chatting with you guys. Thank you. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you, Atika, and thank you, Pune, for hosting thank the session. You. Take care. Uh, Take care. Bye. All right. Bye.